Tutorials.com. Bradford and I got lucky, got our hands on a fractal FM3. Well, you know, you know we, why that we is? We waited just like everyone else. Because when they, the day they announced it, I put my name on that wait list. That's how we, we got it. We like within like a couple hours, both yes. of us did. I actually so, have an invitation to purchase that I have not. You're gonna get. We're gonna get. So I mean, can I have your invite? Can I have your invite? Make it worth my while. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is for sale for the, for right, the right price. price. Yes. Okay. After this video, though, I may be more inclined to purchase you might one. Want and one we, will, of your own. we will talk about that. Yeah. So we've got the Fractal FM3. We're gonna go pretty in depth. This might be a long video with the headphone jack. Yeah, with headphone jack in, installed. Where is it? There. Uh, and I actually used it with headphone jack yesterday. It was quite nice. Um, so we're gonna go pretty in depth. We'll give you timestamps at the bottom of this video so you can see. We're gonna do playing samples. We're gonna walk through uh, a preset that we made, the free AC30 preset, which is available below. Go download it. The modeling in the FM3 is exactly the same as the Axe FX3. Sounds are exactly the same. It has half of the DSP that the Axe FX3 has, so half of the power. So you can't, you can do half as much with it in a single preset. For example, let's just address some things right up front. Only one amp block. You cannot use dual amps in stereo. And that amp, we tried this. Bradford and I were curious because you have a stereo board and you wanted to run it into this thing in stereo and put your wet effects in front of the amp and retain the stereo image and you cannot do it. The Iridium, the, the only reason I thought of that mm -hmm. was because Strymon did that with the Iridium. And at first, I probably would have thought that that was weird. But yeah. using the, the Iridium that way made me think, well, maybe, maybe yeah. you know, Fractal thought about that too. Because it doesn't seem too far out of all possibility. Yeah. We're talking about a, a, a real amp that's been digitally recreated. Yeah. So they could have if they wanted to. Yeah. But <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So you, do, you can't go stereo in front of the amp block and retain the stereo imaging. Now, what you can do is use the effects loop that's built into this thing and go and insert your signal, the effects loop, after the amp. Mm -hmm. So you can run stereo wet effects afterward and retain all that stereo imaging. And if you're a Kemper guy, which we have reasons for why a Kemper user may decide they want to use this thing. Basically, the reason I brought up Kemper mm -hmm. and the reason why I bring up to say that is that you can use this unit uh, and the effects loop in it very much like you would in the Kemper. Yeah. The, the Kemper, you can have stereo effects loop, which is cool. And a lot of people just prefer that because it's more pristine and more studio-like. I prefer that. So you Bradford run is into the unit. Wet effects in front of the amp. I like wet effects in front of the amp. You run into the unit and then hit the amp and then you run out of the unit. Yep. Into. Send. Out of the send. And into your board, or you break up your ch the Which chain. We're going to demo this, by the way. We're going to show this. Yeah, it sounds really cool. And you come back from your right effects into this, into the return, and then you hit the outputs. Yes, and this or has, any other effect block in there. And this has XLR outputs, How which nice. is nice. Yeah. So um, different than like the HX Stomp, which has uh, quarter inch outputs. Um, and we'll talk about this versus HX Stomp a little bit. We're not going to go crazy in depth on that because. Uh, they're more different than you might think. But one thing you mentioned about Kemper, and we'll show this in, in our walkthrough of the of the pack, of the preset, is you can put about as much in this effects-wise as you can in a Kemper profile. That's a good point. We were just talking about that. Well, this, you this guys is, haven't seen this part yet. I think but. this. <laughs> I think this is what really like people are going to compare this to the Stomp. I think this is more of a competitor to the Kemper. Yeah, and I really do. It's not a profiler. There is tone there is match. tone matching in there, which is pretty much this the same video could thing. be three hours long. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna try and keep it down. But but this is it's a little different. But in general, broad strokes purposes, yeah. I think this is definitely more like a Kemper mm -hmm. than the Stomp. I, I absolutely agree.
So you've heard some sounds from the FM3. A few, let's talk a little bit about what you get modeling wise with this thing. The thing about me that, that I think about Fractal is like Metallica uses it on tour. They use FM, or they use Axe FX3 on tour. Like a lot of like hard rock and metal people gravitate toward Fractal. And it has not been uh, known for its like sort like we we in the P and W world are vintage sounds. Praise and worship. Yes. There's a good chance that you may be like a guy who plays like gent or like metal or yeah. harder rock and looking like, at this. And yeah. you're probably wondering who these washed up scrubs are. What are they talking, talking about needing four reverb blocks. We're but. church players. <laughs> we like edge of breakup AC thirties with modulated delay and reverb to the max. That's who we are. But Fractal does those sounds extraordinarily well. Yeah. And uh, they need to be known for that as well. So um, That's why we're here. Yeah, so let's talk about uh, what all is included in this thing as far as effects go. We'll link below where you can see all of the effects and amp modeling that are in there. But it works a little different than Helix if you're coming from that world or Line 6. Um, so Fractal has what you would insert the drive block. And the drive block then includes like 20-some different overdrive models that are based on actual pedals, like the King of Tone. The two different types of tube screamers, the full tone full drive, which I was very happy to see is in there. Yes, a tube screamer. The, ja <laughs> the, the Vimurum Janray is in there. Yes, that's right. Yeah, uh, the uh, the Sir Riot is in there. The and the rat. And, and two different rats. So, yeah. There's the fat rat, oh, too, that's which right. you haven't heard yet. It sounds great. Um, so, you know, each block has, each, each effect type block has all the effects algorithms in there. Each block has four channels. So in drive one, you can have channel A is a full tone, full drive, channel B is a king of tone, channel C is a rat, channel D is a fuzz of some sort, of which there are several. Um, and so it, it works a little different, but all of the modeling is there. The effects modeling in Fractal's world are outstanding. When the edge from U2 uses Zach's effects for model for for effects modeling, that's how you know. Yeah. It's it's good stuff. I think it's I mean it's super flexible. Yeah. It's limiting if you're trying to make it do like everything at once. You need the Axe Fix 3 for that. Yeah, if that's what you want to do. That's what that's what you want. Like that's your big boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, but if you're looking for if you want a coffee cake. Drake's coffee cake. That's the full size. <laughs> if you if you're looking for a unit that can handle I mean you could use it you could be a lead guy and like you want lots of crazy sounds this can still do, do it. it it'll still all do it all in one preset but yep. what we're talking about here is a nice little a little more obtainable mm -hmm. um, you would need something to control it to get maximum yeah, benefit you out can, of it you can get a lot of functionality out of the three switches and we'll which show we will you that as well yeah so all the effects modeling is in there it does it does poly octave pitch really really well that's one thing that a lot of praise, you know, a lot of church guys really like. Although and that's, it's one that's not as in vogue get. as it used to be. It's not, but, but it's not. It's one that a lot of other units aren't. That it's don't something have that a lot of pristine pristine a lot of modelers struggle with. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's that's built in there. Uh, tons of really great reverbs and delays. All the modulation you might ever desire. So amp modeling in the uh, the fractal world in in the firmware that comes with Axe FX3 FM3, there are like 270 some amps. Some of them are different channels of the same amp, but you get that many amps. There are some really good ones in there. Like it's ridiculous. The Morgan AC20, both channels of the uh, of the Matchless DC30, the Chieftain, a couple different Voxes, tons of cool Fenders like. Uh, w one thing you can get in there is like Dweezil Zappa's basement, like his basement. They wow. modeled it. Wow. Yeah, uh, Robin. But I think Dweezil Robin, Zappa uses Axe Effects, so yeah. Robin Ford's Dumble is in there. <sighs> That's like cool. His Dumble. Uh, one of Metallica's own uh, boogies is in is in here because they went Axe Effects. They wanted the model of their of their um, their amp. So there's some really cool amp models, and it's almost kind of like if you think about like the Kemper modeling, how, you know, like Tone Junkie, like he models like really unique amps, like vintage amps, you know, Jonathan. You kind of get that with, with Fractal. Um, because, and it may feel different to you. Because they, they model like individual artists amps. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, it to me, it feels a, like, I, I, I'm a big Kemper guy. Mm -hmm. Feels a little different. Cause like it's, I don't know. It's just, there's just something about it. But like at the end of the day, I'm like, no, that sounds great.
this unit, you'll see something that says Fastlink 2. And Fractal makes two controllers, the FC6 and the FC12, that are designed to go with, actually the FC6 is, this is the FC6 with just something different in it. Oh, it's like exactly the same, this size. Same size. So three buttons here, three buttons here. Yeah, and they're designed to go with the, uh, with the F FM3 and the Axe FX3. And it's, they're really flexible because it's just an XLR all cable. you need is an XLR cable. Yeah. One cable connecting your uh, FM3 or Axe 3 to the controller. And I'll show you a picture of these two controllers. I use the FC12 with the Axe 3 And it gives you uh, 12 buttons or 6 buttons that you can put anything on them. And we'll go through more how the buttons can be set up, but... Any of these buttons can do one of like any three or four things. And multiple things at the They have, you know, they have a yeah, a tap which can be latching or momentary. Ooh. You can have a tap and hold function that does something else. You can make them toggle between two states, whether they're channels on an effect or two different scenes or or anything like that. You oh, get, you use a button to ch to switch uh, channels switch on an channels. amp. On, yeah, you can have a channel button channel switching amp with a button. Uh, you can do eight scenes with this, which are like snapshots if you're in the Helix world. Uh, you get eight on the on the FM3, which is cool. And uh, yeah, the and, and I think you can do a 100 foot XLR cable, or maybe 50. I have used 50. I use a 50 foot cable. No, I've used two 50 foot cables linked together at church uh, to get my FC12 to the, the Axe FX3, which is Somewhere else backstage. Which and it most all people works. probably wouldn't be putting this off stage. Yeah, this would probably sit right next to you. Yeah, because like you could put this in an F C six. Yes. Like a pedal train two. Yep. With like it's, an expression it would just be pedal. Two of these. Yeah. With an expression pedal or a volume pedal, yep. whichever you prefer. And like that could be an all in and you'd have all unit. in one rig. And yep. actually if you use this with the F what I keep getting confused. F C six. F C six, yeah. That means nine buttons. Yeah, you get nine buttons. Yeah, but you could do that, Very and uh, you have an all-in rig. What is this? This is right right around a thousand. This is a thousand dollars, and then the FC six is five hundred dollars. So that's fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred bucks, and then an expression pedal. Let's call, let's call it a hundred. You give or take sixteen hundred. Sixteen hundred dollars. Price of a Helix. Price of a which Kemper. is the price of a Helix, and that's what we were yeah. saying. That now there's limitations to both. Now the Helix is way more powerful. Yeah, what you can do like than the FM three. But you can do a lot more in a single preset. But people may argue the sound. So you have to decide. You may prefer the sound of one to the other. Yeah. But at this point in time, we're not making any statements. We really aren't. Because like <laughs> you almost can't, because like I can make I can make an argument for why you want to use one or the other, depending they're, on your they're usage. All, they're all great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so but at this point in time, and we I feel like we keep saying this every time we do these videos. Yeah. You, like I feel like the only limits are the user. Yes. Because there are so many options yes. now. And like there's something about Fractal that I think sounds better than Kemper and Helix and like the Iridium and we, we tried the Simplifier. Mm -hmm. But then there's something about the Iridium I like better than all the other units. Mm -hmm. There's something I like about the Simplifier better than the other yep. units. And it comes down to your your application or like how maybe how your brain works. Because like for you, like the Fractal is like, you're like, I love this thing. And Me like, personally? Yes, you personally. Yeah, you love I, the I Fractal. Love the X -Fix 3. And part of it is because of all the ways you can adjust and edit things. Just like wait till Oh, we, I'm a tweaker. Just man. wait till I, we show you this next clip when Brian's at his desk. Would you like to adjust the output EQ of your full tone full drive that doesn't exist on the real pedal? Would you like to change like the diodes in it? Oh you would? Well, you can. Yeah. That's that's my bag. Where I, I love I, it. I'm like <laughs> I'm like Kemper. Put a profile on it. Turn into low EQ, we're good. Done. Yes. Brian will spend hours tweaking a fractal patch. And I, and I will enjoy every second of it. And then he will write a product manual for you to enjoy. <laughs> so please read the readme yes. because he spends a lot of time on those. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> Let's take a moment and talk about the FM3 versus the Stomp. Here's the Stomp. First of all, that's funny. Line six, how have you 
how have you achieved this magic that the the stomp is this big? It is insane. This thing is a tank. <laughs> I know, man. That thing you can drive over with a car. Um, <laughs> like, so. I mean, it could be pedal board friendly, but it almost kind of isn't. <laughs> I would. Here's the thing. If I had an FC6, which is what I would buy to use this if I wanted this as like an all-in-one, uh, that would be great. I would not put them on a board. I'd just put them next to each other and then put a pedal. You know, I, would, I don't... I don't think that you need a board for this unless you have a lot of other pedals oh i like board. i like boards so i put it on a board yeah mainly, so mainly for instagram so though. first of all <laughs> if you just want to incorporate something into a board this is far more pedal board friendly mm -hmm. um a couple things that the uh the stomp will do that fractal won't do dual amps, dual amps. in stereo stereo that be stereo in <clears throat> even. stereo input and dual amp all the way through that can be something that is would be like I'm getting the stomp because they want that. Yeah. Um, sound wise, you can make them sound pretty similar. You, they sound a little different. You can they decide do. whether you like the sound of one versus the other. Again, device agnostic here. We don't care which one you like better. They just they just <coughs> they just feel a little different. Yeah. And, and I think feel is almost more important because yeah. You you the user are gonna notice that more in a mix. And this isn't a like, well, 90% of the church congregation can't tell, which you are right. That's true. But like, even then, even in a mix. Even an ear mix in a full band. Even when I'm watching Brian play, yeah, I, for, I have forgotten on multiple occasions which one he's using. I would bet lots of money that I could post a clip on YouTube and not say what it was and no one would really know the difference. And somebody would swear up and down it was one or the other. And they would give their reasons why. In fact, I've done that before in yeah. forums. It's, it's kind of funny. With Helix versus Kemper and all that stuff. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Yeah. But I think the way the unit reacts with your playing, mm -hmm. or like, I mean, an amp does this, right? You, you feel like a little bit of something when you're playing a real amp. Yeah. And it's not yeah. just about like the air pushing. It's just still like the way things kind of react with the strings and the pickups and all that. Yeah. Like, that's a thing. Like, I think you, these units have a way that they react and you have to yeah. decide. You're like, this sound is what I want. It may not feel the best, but I want the sound. Yeah. Or this feels way better, and like the sound is is pretty on par, or whatever reason. Yeah. But I think feel is a big thing. It is, and they do feel different. They do, and we understand too that it's. I mean, in this room, all of this stuff is here. Like we have the stomp, we have the pod go, we have the helix, we have the X X three, we have the FM three, we have a Kemper, we have an AX eight. Like we have a. A uh, Pod HD five hundred X right over there, um, and and the only reason is because we make products for all this stuff, patches and things, and we understand you don't have that lux. Most people don't have that luxury. Yeah. So um, hopefully this kind of thing is informative and helpful for you. Uh, but so we talked about what what can the Stomp do that the FM three can't do? Can do dual amps, um, but I think that the advantage that the FM three has, which I think makes it it's it first of all it's almost twice as much money so the stomp is 599 fm3 is 999 i don't think these are comparable products and the reason why i say that is you can put so much more in you can. the uh fm3 preset so we showed you this preset you know the free ac30 preset has four overdrives four delays four reverbs two different compression settings different i mean a chorus setting eight different snapshots all of it you can map to buttons um individually like you can't really do that with the stomp and the stomp is not designed to do that like that's what the helix is for you know um and so you know, like you can't stack all those overdrives together at the same time but you can get drive sounds from the amp block at least two different drive sounds from the amp block uh, and then stack a drive with it. So you really can put more stuff in an FM3 preset than you can in a stomp patch, which is what makes me, I, I'm, I lean toward this thing as a, a, is a mostly direct competitor to a Kemper, to a Kemper profiler, Yeah. not the stage, because the stage has way more buttons and yeah. is much more stage friendly. Yeah. yeah. So what are your thoughts, this thing compared to other modelers on the market. They all sort of have their own niche. They do. They're all like, which is they kind of weird. They all have strengths and weaknesses. I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of interesting. Everything's rather different. When I mean, at least to us, maybe we're one of the only the few people who actually think they're so different. Like maybe just because we well, use them all the yeah, time. Yeah, and I can see too a consumer, a, a guitar player who wants to buy a modeling unit. They're gonna if they're 
looking at the, they're going to consider these two things yeah. back to back. Yeah. And they're going to consider them as they they solve the same problem. And in I need a direct in solution. Broad strokes purposes. And, and that, yes. at that point they compete with one another. Yeah. Yeah. yeah at that point and you might But they are more different than you think. Yeah. yeah. I really like how this sounds. And I, I like how it feels. Too. I love it. And yeah. if you haven't seen it or it's not out yet, we we did do a video showing me running my pedal board into the Axe FX3. Yes. And what we did that was, was a glorious sound. We ran stereo out of my board into yeah. the back of the Axe FX and basically into treated, a stereo input. Yes, to a stereo input. So two X, uh, quarter inches into the back of the Axe FX. And I got to use two amps mm -hmm. and treated it pretty much for all intents and purposes yeah. like two amps or even like two Kempers. Like, and that was kind of our point was mm -hmm. that's cheaper than two Kempers. And so you may decide that you like that I have more. said that to many a Kemper and user. And smaller and smaller and easier to carry than two Kempers, all yes. of that. But here's the thing. I like the way the axe sounds. Mm -hmm. This sounds uh, as well same with same. my pedals. Mm -hmm. But here's the problem. I'm, I can't throw this in my bag easily <laughs> and take this with me. To, I, I, if I'm going to be, if I'm going to use this, this thing, this is huge. Like it's it's big to put on a pedal board. It's huge. It takes a ton of real estate on a board. So if I'm go, or even so, it's like, I mean, my Kemper is bigger, mm -hmm. and I do take that. So I'll, I will say that it is. But yes. like this is like a weird and a kind much of more in between cumbersome form factor. Yeah, I'll I'll say. But like, this isn't going to fit on a pedal board to work with pedals quite as easily as the Stomp will, or the or the Iridium yeah. will, or the Simplifier will. I mean, this yeah, I put this on. This thing is this is built. To, to put on a board. That's 100% like what they actually said, like why they made this. This is it. Yeah. You just throw it on the board wherever in your chain and yeah. it does that. Yeah. So this I, thing is is not. It, no. I mean, it it's, can. It's ginormous. Even the bottom of it, look, it's not built to put on a board like the way the feet are. Yeah. And it says too, it's like you can't block these these vents. I We got to meet Jordan Holt. Mm -hmm. Summer Nam 2019. Jordan Holt plays for Carrie Job predominant, yeah. predominantly. Carrie Job and Cody Carnes. They kind of like tour together but they mm -hmm. like Whatever. Um, so we got to talk to him, and he, like, loves Fractal. Yeah, he's an AX8 guy. Yes, but he has one of these now. Yeah, he went to the FM. And he has, I don't, he has, I think he has pedal train, and maybe, like, a PT3 a or something. Yeah. And he put this on the board, and I think he, I can't remember, I didn't actually get to ask him. I, you look at the board, he's got a couple reverbs on there. Yeah. And I think he's using, he must be using this for delay as well. Mm -hmm. So, like, you could do that. But, like, for me... The way I want to, and he has external drive pedals. Mm -hmm. The way I would want to utilize this, I would want to, you put it on a board and put pedals with it. But like, that's not anywhere near the same as if I were to put that on a board and run. Because like that is, these things, if you haven't seen one or used one, they're about the size of a, a Strymon or an Empress pedal. The big box Strymon or Empress pedals. It or the is an impressive feat of engineering. Right it here. is. Eric Klein and company. Mm. And Ben Adrian. Yep. Those guys. Brava. Yeah. Bravo. Yeah, this is also an impressive. Feeling. This is also too. What you it's get in a different there. regard. Yeah, so like I mean, this is a this is more of a full rig. Yeah. Device. So honestly, I saw this, and after we kind of broke it down, and we kind of talked about like how we we're going to use things, I was like, I wouldn't mind one of these with like an F F I have to FC look to make six. FC six. I would I wouldn't mind throwing this on like a PT two or something with an FC six. Yeah. And getting like a little expression pedal. Their fractals expression. Controllers it's feel good. really good. Yeah, I wouldn't want great. the ginormous I use, one. I use the ginormous one. The Brian likes one. the ginormous one. I got, yeah, I need a big target for my foot. Well, you, know, you would clumsy, think I would too, clumsy but guitar player. I just, there's something about that yeah. compactness. One thing I will say about the dual amp deal. Um, there are so many amps in the Fractal universe. I don't really run dual amps in the Axe FX3 very often. So, just um, stereo effects. Stereo effects after the amp. Yeah, I don't run dual amps in Axe FX3 much. I do some, but there are amps in here that, like, you want a Fender meets Vox tone. There are amps that give you that Yeah. in here. We were just experimenting with the uh, with one of the train wreck amps, the Liverpool. The Liverpool. It is Marshall and Vox basically married together. It's awesome. It sounds like if you would run a Marshall and a Vox amp together... And it and it sounds great. And, and like, so it's, there are amps that achieve what you kind of go for with a dual amp sound. And it's not as jarring as hearing like one flavor hard left yeah. and another flavor well, hard right. Some people right. might really like that. Some people do. Yes. Yeah. 
But I, I'm like, I don't know if I like that. It seems a little weird. <laughs> yeah, it's also nice to have a cohesive sound and then stereo effects. I think the stereo magic is more in the wet effects than it is in stereo amps. Yeah. scratch the surface on what you can do with the FM3 and the fractal world in general and uh, we could sit here and talk a lot more about it but what we've done is we've made a separate video where we walk through the free AC30 patch that you can get for the FM3 again link below and uh, we I'll show you the editor how all the blocks work how you can set up scenes how you can use these foot switches to navigate uh, through all of your effects and scenes that are in a single preset, you can use these three switches to get to literally everything. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's a link for that video below, or it might be popping up around here somewhere, but uh, we wanted this video not to be an hour long, so... <laughs> we're close, but we're not at an hour. Yeah, yeah, so um, definitely check that video out if you want to learn more about how you can, you know, edit and set up presets and exactly what all you can put in a preset, which it's impressive what you it can is. do. And, and we kind FM, of in the FM3. And we kind of approached it like I'm still learning a lot about this. I don't use this quite as often. Brian, this is help me, you, you use an XFX pretty regularly. I use XFX3 all the time, yeah. Yeah. So for me, we kind of approached it as I was holding the camera, but it was more like Brian teaching me. <laughs> yeah. So like I was interjecting, asking clarifying questions and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so you may find that helpful to kind of understand how the unit kind of works. Yeah. And how you could utilize it in your own ways. Check it out, link below. Link on the below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It takes me, always takes me forever to get to. Subscribe, like, comment. Let us know uh, what your thoughts are, Fractal versus the rest of the modeling world. I have a thought. We know that we may not have, we may have covered a whole bunch of stuff that you don't care about. Yeah. If you have questions, let us know because uh, we'd know, love to make some follow-up content. We'd love to content. make follow-up content uh, or we can answer in the comments or follow uh, the Instagram accounts or whatever, and um, because we know that, like, yeah, there's One not thing. a lot of stuff out there about the way, like we said, like the way that we use mm -hmm. that fractal stuff. There's not a lot of info out there. And one thing I would love to do is get an FC6 and show how you can use an FC6 and the FM3 for a, a whole rig. Yes. Yeah, that'd be cool. Anyway, that might be coming soon. Who knows? Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye. <laughs>